Well guys, we are down in the deep dark dungeon of a food storage area in the house and it is time for me to go through with you what we put into the pantry in the Every Bit Counts Challenge. But first, I thought I would give you a look at what state it's in right now before we put anything on. So this is still how it would have been pre-harvesting season. So we've kind of been using a few things off. You saw me using a lot of that canned tomato juice, the Italian style tomatoes, things like that. We've been using stuff off the shelf because that is the idea of preserving. Preserving it when it is in season and you've got it so that you can use it in those buffer times when you maybe don't have tomatoes like me. It was September before I got tomatoes out of the garden. So you can definitely see on these shelves, there are some blank spots. It's a little precarious. We're getting low on those ready-made meals and I really haven't focused much on those yet. But one thing that is holding steady is our overstock of things like tomato juice and that sort of stuff. I've taken everything from down there and I've restocked up top what would fit. So that is all that you're seeing here. Some of these items here, you can see the shelves are full. Well, that's because I had that overstock from last year and I'm really glad that I did because it's given me a reprieve this year with the tomatoes doing poorly I still have a lot of sauces and things like that left so let's take a look at what we have to put back on these shelves after the every bit counts challenge so here is everything that I canned up in the every bit counts challenge we're stacked two boxes thick like I mentioned in my every bit counts 126 jars put away or well they're not put away yet that's what we're going to do in one minute but I am super pleased with where we're at and you're going to see coming up here we've been harvesting like mad and there's a lot more getting canned up to go into this pantry so let's kind of go through things as we put them on the shelf and then we'll take an overall look at the end so one of the main things you saw us make throughout the challenge multiple times was august stew we made 52 jars technically i made 56 jars but we opened some of them so they are all actually going to be stored in the overstock because what you're seeing on the shelf behind me here is what's left of last year's and we of course need to use that up first because we want to rotate so we've got four nice complete boxes neatly stored below and i'm left with these four rogue ones so one of the important things to always do label the tops because these get stuffed into mystery boxes down here and it's always a surprise when i open them up in the uh, off season and go oh i didn't even know i had any of those left so very important to label and rotate for sure so another thing that we made quite a bit of that i was super happy with and you can see how wonderful liquid that has stayed is our raspberry low sugar syrup still has sugar but a lot lower than when i made my cherry syrup so next we've got that blackberry jelly and syrup that i made now as you guys all know that syrup basically turned out to be jelly so i've had to make a new label because this is a new one i've never done this one before blackberry jelly and low sugar i'm absolutely loving the steam juicer and thank you to everybody that recommended that because this allows me a nice clean product that has kept really really well with the low sugar so that's the spot that this is going to go we've opened one it disappeared really really fast but i'm still testing that pomona's pectin to make sure it's going to keep long term for storage now you can see here i only have two jars of raspberry jam up here yet you know i made a whole bunch when i first started testing out the pomona's pectin now i have to admit i've been skeptical with that experiment because I didn't use sugar in one batch I used honey in one batch and then very little sugar in the other and some of the jars have not stayed sealed or kept well so they live in the fridge now and hopefully in the next round I will do the jelly and it'll keep perfectly like this blackberry but it was a learning experience and I'm glad I did it so next item to join the shelf here behind me is our dill pickles and this is something I was super happy about because I am not very good at growing cucumbers so to actually get 14 jars of pickles was pretty awesome and I have to admit Alex and I have already polished off two <laughs> so they're not going to last very long but that's okay so this is going in in place of the dill chips that I used to make they were like sliced thin ones and they were always soggy and horrible and so this is going to work great marinated roasted red peppers mm, superb but unfortunately we don't eat as many of these as we used to now that we don't do sandwiches and things so i made five jars this year 
but as you can see on the shelf, I still had six jars from last year. So I pulled those forward, rotating the stock, right? And now we're gonna put four of these in the back and one of them's gonna go into the overflow. This is always a really awkward spot to film because of this post and the very tight space, but I'm gonna do my best. Actually, Chris is gonna do his best because he's the one filming. <laughs> but garlic pasta sauce, again, something we don't use that often, but I like to keep a decent amount in stock. I made five jars this year. That's all I'm going to make because we still have nine jars on the shelf and the jars on the shelf are from 2022. I didn't make it last year, so I probably won't need to make it next year either, but it's good to kind of have new stock every now and then. We're testing my guns here. Ugh, this is heavy, but this is our lamb and black bean chili that we made. Again, if you were interested in that recipe, it can be done with beef too. It doesn't have to be lamb, but as you know, lamb is what we grow here. This is a lot and I don't have space for all of this on the shelf. I store eight of them on the shelf and I still have one old one from last year. I think it's actually from earlier this year. So we're gonna get some of them on and some of them are gonna go into the overstock. Well, one thing I'm noticing here, my chili from last year was a lot runnier. So I'm really glad with the changes I made this year because we like it thick. We don't want to have to add crackers. All right, last, I almost said ingredient like I'm cooking something. Last jars to go on the shelf are our taco meat. And this is something I am definitely gonna be making more of in the nearish future. We did eight jars and we put a bunch in the freezer and everything that went in the freezer is long gone. So I'm resisting the urge to start opening jars already, but we'll get some more of this made. And for now, I've started a new spot because this was something that I didn't always make. I usually just did chili meat. So I'm really glad now to have some taco meat on the shelves as well. So really that's everything that we've made up to this point throughout August. Although we did do a lot of freezing and a lot of dehydrating, which you guys did see. And we will kind of touch on those at another time because you all know freezer challenge is coming because we're already almost four freezers completely full and there's still a lot of harvesting to go. But that is not what this video is about. I feel that the shelves look adequately stocked for a mid harvest pantry tour. <laughs> we still have a long ways to go. There is tons of blank space. As you can see here, as Chris scans over, we've got a lot of gaps. We kind of really lacked on those ready meals, chilies, stews, things like that. So hopefully coming into fall, we'll be doing some preserving with those items. Now, granted, some of those items are more store-bought type stuff and things like that that we use in with our own ingredients. So that's why we haven't focused on them too much right now. Right now, we're focusing on getting those things that we have here on the farm preserved in order to make sure we don't lose the value that they have. So hopefully you'll see some more things coming like soups, stews, beans. I don't know. We'll see what we get to when we get there. But all in all, I am super happy with how the pantry is coming together so far. And I know we still have weeks left of preserving before the winter season really sets in. I'm back. I keep reappearing at the end of videos because there's always something I forget. This is precarious. Our level of curry sauce is very low. 12 jars remaining. So that is one of the priorities on our agenda coming up.